Hello and this is the second part of the Treaty of Versailles video where first and foremost we would be looking over what was the Allied response of the treaty. So the President of France mainly liked five things about the Treaty of Versailles. First and foremost, the disarmament of Germany. Finally, for the first time in modern history, the German Empire, or now the Weimar Republic, was had an army insignificant compared to that of France. No longer would Germany ever think about attacking France, and, no, and nor would Germany be able to protect against an invasion from France. Finally, France had an upper hand against Germany in the field of battle. Clemenceau was also most pleased by the reparations clause as most of the western frontier of World War I was fought on French soil and France had therefore experienced one of the, some of the highest losses both in civilian lives and property damages. Moreover, the high reparation cost also acted as a means of deterring any German invasion or conspiracy against France as their economy would be too weak and burdened to divert their attention from their failing economy. France also retrieved back the land of Alsace-Lorraine which Germany had taken from France back in 1871 when the German Empire was formed formally. This is of great significance because back then Alsace-Lorraine was taken away from France as a sign of French defeat and humiliation. Furthermore, it only seems fitting because it was in the Hall of Mirrors in Versailles where Germany effectively was formed and its Kaiser crowned and in, Germ and in Versailles was where the German Empire also saw its last day. Furthermore, Clemenceau liked the fact that France gained new quote-unquote mandates from the fallen German Empire which were essentially just ad an addition to their colonies. Not only did this allow France to gain more control of, gain control over more land, gain more resources and population, still maintain the moral high ground by quote unquote liberating these former colonies from the clutches of the evil German Empire and making them into mandates where France would generous, generously govern over them till the people are able to form their own governments. Whenever France may choose, the time was right for that to be. However, there were some things that did not go exactly as Clemenceau planned. According to the Treaty of Versailles, France gained access to the Tsar region of Germany for just 15 year years. The Tsar region was important because it was a center of natural resources and industry, especially coal based ones. Therefore, France wanted complete and irrevocable access to the Tsar region in order to fuel their economy and get back on its feet as quickly as possible while stripping away the German opportunity to do the very same as the rest of its industrial regions in Upper Silesia was given to, away to Poland. Furthermore, Clemenso disliked the fact that the Rhineland was still part of Germany. Though the Rhinelands had been demilitarized and no German military officials were 
allowed to step in, in them in order to create a buffer a buffer area for, uh, connected connecting Germany, the rest of Germany, armed Germany, and the French border. However, Clemenceau wanted a fractured and disunited Germany, and he also wanted an independent Rhineland so he could effectively puppet and control its government for France. He believed that an demilitarized Rhineland is still an ineffective buffer against the force that is Germany and he wanted to be prepared more than anyone else for another German assault, whenever that may be. Next on the list, we have Woodrow Wilson, the President of the United States of America. He was especially pleased with the fact that the League of Nations was finally formed and an international forum for the international community and nations could be made where they could discuss how to go about enacting global affairs and moreover ensure global security by keeping each other in check. He was also pleased by the fact that self-determination had been carried out in most of the occupied European territories and led the way to formation of new countries led by their own people such as Poland, Czechoslovakia and more. However, he was most displeased that the remainder of his 14 points and their policies had been ignored. One of them being the UK against the policy of open seas and open trade as UK being the dominant navy force and the largest empire still wanted to maintain some of their grasp on their former glory in the new changing world. Woodrow Wilson was also disappointed to know that none of the Entente or Allied forces had any aspirations to disarm after the end of the war and started instead to stockpile more heavily on military equipment as if preparing for another conflict. Moreover, it was clearly evident how racism and bias shaped the inaction of his self-determination policies as many of the European peoples had been granted self-determination in their own countries, but the former colonies had not, though they were quote-unquote liberated as mandates. It could also be noted that the formation of such new countries such as Poland and Czechoslovakia was only done so as a deterrent against Germany and to create mo more allies for Britain and France against another German assault if that if one may ever arise again. Then we have third of the big three Lloyd George. He especially liked reducing the German Navy which had been growing exponentially since the introduction of the world-class destroyer ships known as Dreadnoughts. As these new ships had essentially made all the previous battleships obsolete, it allowed Germany to enter a naval battle race against the UK in the early 1900s. The disarmament clause on Germany finally meant that the UK could cement its authority as the world's naval superpower and could effectively single-handedly single control the seven seas. Lord George was also pleased in getting UK more colonies and its dominions once too, such as South Africa acquiring the former German colony of Namibia and expanding its borders. There were also things that Lord George disliked. Lord George was especially not fond of the idea 
about Wilson's idealistic open global politics and the abolition of secret diplomacy. Wilson wanted free navigation at sea for all nations in war and peace, which would effectively uh, destroy the UK's monopoly on ocean trading routes and security. Furthermore, Lloyd George was also against Clemenceau's harsh policies, as moreover than anything, Lloyd George wanted a peace and to continue his trading with Germany. Germany was, after all, the economic and industrial powerhouse of Europe and hence of great asset to the United Kingdom. And Clemens, if Clemenceau's harsh policies had been enacted and the German state being dissolved into city-states, the UK would certainly have faced a devastating loss in its trade. It did not these things were not helped by the fact that the UK and Lloyd George, in fact, faced opposition in, internally due to the formation of the treaty, such as an influential economic advisor by the name of J.M. Keynes himself said that the reparations were too harsh and would most definitely lead to a second war. However, Lloyd George wanted to punish Germany and maintain friendly relations with France more so than ever before and continue to ignore such heats and warnings. Now the question rises, why was the Treaty of Versailles important? And foremost, it was the only treaty, peace treaty, where the big three were directly involved in its formation and negotiations. While dealing with the remainder of the central powers such as Austria-Hungary, the Ottoman Empire and Kingdom of Bulgaria, none of the big three which were Lord George of the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Clemenceau, the President of France and Woodrow Wilson, the President of the United States involved or showed any interest in enacting out what their peace treaties and settlements would look like. Furthermore, the Treaty of Versailles also set a precedent and principle for what the other treaties with the other members of the Central Powers would look like. And in fact, due to the Treaty of Versailles, all of them had some similarities, such as the guilt clause to some extent, reduction in army, loss of land, mainly due to the clause of self-determination, and paying reparations for all civilian and property damages caused. Moreover, and one of the most important points, the Treaty of Versailles was directly responsible for the formation of League of for the formation of the League of Nations. Therefore, everything that the League would come to do, and how the League was formed, and what were its attributes, strengths, and faults, stem from that one fateful day in Versailles when the treaty was signed. The Treaty of Versailles was also important because it directly involved national interests such as Britain and France directly face to face dealing with Germany as entities and them being not scared of German allies or another outbreak of war. The Treaty of Versailles was so final in its nature that the involved major powers knew that they would face no backlash from the international forum. It is also important to note what the aftermath of the Treaty of Versailles was. It, the Germans were a nationalistic and prideful people and it is important to note that none of the war effort had ever been 
inside German borders. To them, to the German people, the only reason that Germany, their glorious fatherland, had lost the war was due to the inadequacy of democracy and bureaucracy which allowed such weak-willed and spineless people to come into power that would yield and sign such a terrible peace treaty. Their soldiers after returning became heroes, their generals became gods, and their resentment with the treaty only grew. This was not helped by the fact that aside from the treaty, the world also ostracized Germany for actions that 20 years ago would have been perfectly normal in the tact and art of war. Germany was refused seating in the newly formed League of Nations, heavily plagued by reparations while none of its other allies were done so remotely as closely, and this making of Germany the black sheep of the global community only destroyed talks of reconciliation. The nationalism of the German people slowly grew into fascism and directly led to events which allowed people such as Hitler to come into power and brought about the events of World War II. And with that, we conclude our topic of today, which was the Treaty of Versailles and its aftermath.